Hey everybody, today I have a Champion 196cc 4000 watt, 3500 watt running generator. And um, it had nasty gas in it, so we went ahead and changed the gas in it. And I blew through the fuel line and the float was down. So I'm like, oh, and the guy claimed he drained the fuel out of it. So I went ahead and filled up with fuel and gas just pouring out of it, the float was stuck down. So I already took and pulled the float bowl off and cleaned up the float bowl and got the needle working, but it still won't run because the jet inside is clogged. So we're gonna take it apart real quick. The first thing you wanna do, there's an air cleaner housing that hooks on here. You, you unhook that. Then there are four screws that hook this piece that holds the air filter. You take that out. Now you can get to the screws that hold this in and the carburetor on. This is a emission line off the gas tank that goes in the air cleaner. You pull that out. This is the uh, crankcase vent. You pull that out. So now what we got to do is we need to get these two nuts off. Sorry, I'm trying a new uh, light here. I might be blinding you or you might not be able to see. You get, pull it back on the phone. So I took that nut off and that nut off, and there's another bolt on the back side here to get this whole air cleaner assembly loose. So that is the drain for the float ball. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and tuck this, this uh, crankcase ventilation line out of my way, and I'm gonna tuck this out of the way. So now the next thing that's very important on these when you're working on them is right here is the linkage that goes over to the, the, uh, the governor assembly. So you need to remember that the spring on this one hooks into the second hole and the rod hooks into there. So now we can get a pair of needle nose, which I thought I had out. And push on that and we will reach in here and disconnect the spring. And I do believe the rod is not going to come out until we take the carburetor off. We also need to take the fuel line off at one of the ends so we can... There's the fuel line is off. A little bit of gas. See, the gas is pretty good that's in it. Rag. All right. So now we need to kind of rock the carburetor back and forth on its mounts. There we go. Now see, as you pull the carburetor out, it pulls on the linkage. So now this linkage rod will pull right out. You cannot disconnect that linkage with the carburetor in. So now we have the carburetor off. Unfortunately, the gasket has gotten completely ruined. Uh, great. We are going to have to make a gasket because I do not have another gasket for this. But um, let me continue on. Uh, and we'll move into the back room on the workbench. So I'll start taking the carburetor apart. All right. So after I slid the carburetor off, this gasket completely ripped right here. So we went ahead and I took a razor blade and carefully scraped it off of the carburetor and the other piece that was stuck on the engine. And I'm going to tape it back together and I'm going to make a new gasket for it. There will be another video on how to make gaskets further on in the channel. Uh, when I finally, there's a, there's a couple videos that I've already showed how to make gaskets, but I'll have to show and make another video. Um, so we'll go ahead and we'll pull the float bowl off. Now, like I said, I tried to get this one running really quick and it didn't run. The head of this 
bolt was completely nasty. I took it over to the wire wheel and cleaned that up already. And I already took and cleaned up the float bowl. And the float here, the needle and seat in here was stuck down. And this one's got a spring on. See how nice and that's moving up and inside there is moving. That's, that's the way it's supposed to be. So, but that's not the problem. That was the problem. So I've already cleaned this two pieces off. You just want to take and wipe them down. The problem that we're having is inside here, the jet is clogged and probably the emulsion tube. We need to get that out. Uh, let me go get my special screwdriver I have made for this and we'll be right back. All right, you can see that this hole here is partially clogged up with stuff. So now we're gonna take the screwdriver, reach in here, uh, yeah, it's all gummy. Uh, yeah, see the stuff on the screwdriver? It's all gummy in here. So we're going to take the jet out. There's the jet. Let me see. Put all that stuff in there. And you can see how, yeah, it's completely clogged up. There is an emulsion tube in there, which we'll try to get out next. Uh, let's see. You have to, sometimes you have to, this is really gummed up. And you have a little gum cutter. We'll spray a little gum cutter up in here. And I'll take my screwdriver up through the carburetor and push on up. It did push down, so let's see if I can get it out the rest of the way. Uh, it did push down. Where is the pocket screwdriver? Here's the pocket screwdriver. Oh, yep, it pushed back up. Pushed in. We're just going to work it back and forth. Up, oh, and there it comes. Here is the emulsion tube. And there's all these little holes here. And I can already see that one's open. That one's clogged. That one's clogged. That one's clogged. Oh, and look at the big piece of scum right there. All right, here is the other one. So uh, what I have also is I have a uh, torch tip cleaning tool that I'm going to clean these out with. And I don't think I'm going to soak this carburetor. It doesn't really look like it needs... Oh, there's one more thing we're going to do is we're going to pull this idle stop out, count the turns, and then we're going to pop this jet out because if this jet's clogged, the idle will go wah, wah, wah. So we'll have to get that out. So, so what we're gonna do for now is I'm gonna go ahead and run this all the way in and count it. So there's one turn, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four. It's roughly four turns out, so we know. So we'll go ahead and unscrew this all the way. And now we'll pop this jet out if it will come. There it goes. It's on O-rings. And now there is a there is a hole in here we have to clean out and a hole this way. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in the back room. Of course, I usually do it in the back room, but they're back there doing they're doing some tires, so I didn't want to be in the way. I have some gum cutter. I don't have any carburetor cleaner here. That stuff is at home. I have carburetor cleaner that is in a mason jar. I'm going to go get that. I'm going to put these parts in there and let them soak for a while, and then we'll come back, and um, we'll start cleaning everything up. Here, I'll show you the mason jar. Let's walk on back. Yeah. Let's see. Oh, actually, I do have some of that, but that's not what I want. Where's my other mason jar? All right, here's my other mason jar of gum cutter, but it's already dried out. I do have a little bit of carburetor cleaner in this one, but I was using that to clean some battery terminals, so I don't really want to use that. But we'll take my mason jar, and we'll fill it up with some more gum cutter, since I don't have any of the gunk carburetor cleaner and let this stuff soak for a little bit and we'll come back and we'll clean everything up.
I know the furnace is on. I hope you all can hear me okay. So usually with this jet here, I do not take and uh, put it in the gum cutter or into the gunk carburetor cleaner when cleaning it because it's plastic. So I have a torch tip cleaning tool. I have the smallest one out. So what I usually do with these is I just take the tip cleaning tool and I go up through there like this. Once I get that open and clean, which it was stuck, then I'll take gum cutter and I'll spray in it and around it and I'll wipe this off with a rag, which I've already done. So there's those two pieces. This piece I've already cleaned out. What I do, I use gum cutter and I have a wire brush with a wire brush head that I can get in around the drain real good. So I've already cleaned this out as good as I can. With the float, same thing. The float had some residue of the bad gas on it. I just take gum cutter, spray it down with a rag. Same with the, the needle here. The needle had a light coating of yellow on it and I cleaned that off. Now with the carburetor body, I actually have gotten Q-tips. See how dirty the Q-tips are? And I take the Q-tips, spray them down with gum cutter. I go up and through where the emulsion tube goes and the jet is and clean that out. And then in this hole here where that black jet, you can't see it now, is really clean. I did the same thing. I just took some gum cutter, went in, cleaned this all out, took and went in here, cleaned this all out as good as I can. I waited until, you know, they, they came clean. As you can see, those two are really yellowish brown, more yellow than brown, I guess. And then this one here came out clean. But I spray all this stuff off, and sometimes if it's really tough, I'll get in here with the wire brush, and I'll wire brush the rest of that varnish off from the gasoline. So this has been done, then I spray gum cutter up through where the jet goes, down through that jet, soak it with a little bit of gum cutter and blow it all off. So I've already done that, that's all good. Q-tips are definitely your friend. Go to the dollar store and buy some cheap Q-tips. So I have not done the emulsion tube in the jet yet. They've been soaking a little bit of gum cutter. So I'll go ahead and get a old rag and pour the gum cutter into the old rag and then pour those out there. Gonna do the same thing with this. This here, you can see that jet in there is clogged. We're gonna take the smallest one up and there it is. Did you see it right there? That is the piece of dirt that just pushed out of this jet causing this machine not to run right there right. so we'll write that off so the jet cleaner excuse me the tip cleaner actually has like a built-in file so i'll just go ahead and i'll file that around and get that clean now i you could probably you can probably see the light shining through that jet now. So I'm gonna spray that off with gum cutter next. So now this is the emulsion tube and I can see that these tubes are clogged. This has six tubes, six tubes. So I usually start on one side, start here, go all the way through. So there's one, there's two, there's three, there's four, there's five, there's six. So then we just do the same thing. You can, I don't know if you can see it or not, but they are definitely clogged up. So then we, then I just do the same thing down the next row. And count, there's the first one, the second one, the third one, the fourth one, the fifth one, and there's the sixth one. I'll also take the skinny one and just shove it up through the center just for ha-ha's and spin it around a couple times. So now I'll take my gum cutter my gum cutter on the straw and I'll shoot gum cutter through it and block it with this end to make sure that stuff sprays through 
all the ports. Now, I don't really want to, can you see that? I don't want to get my camera, see all the liquid coming through the ports. So you want to make sure that you have liquid coming through all the ports. Then, after I do that, I saw that liquid's coming through all the ports, I just like to do it again. So there's the top two. There goes the furnace. So, go through all of them again. Oh, here we go. They're cussing in the back room. Just great. I don't understand why they have to cuss. And so we're cleaning up the emulsion tube. So there is the emulsion tube all double cleaned. And now I'll spray gum cutter through it again to make sure that everything's flowing, which everything looks like it's flowing. And this gum cutter's already empty. Okay. So there's that. The same way here, I'm gonna shoot some gum cutter through this jet. Oh, I got some on my camera. All right. All right, we got all that stuff ready to go to put, reassemble. Let me uh, wash my hands and we'll come back and reassemble. All right, we're all ready to take and start reassembling the carburetor. Now, like I said, I just took Q-tips and I've blown use q-tips and use um, air and blown everything out so now we're going to start reassembling so first thing is the emulsion tube and the big end goes down so the emulsion tube just fits back in like this then the jet goes in next and you use a screwdriver to screw the jet in and then you want to be sure you're holding it tight and tighten it up jets in now all right so now the next thing we do is the float and the needle and seat it's easier if you do it this way what I like to do is get the needle started like that so you're ready to go then you push this in you line up and it pushes right in and then you can see that it's working properly so like I said there's the rod it just goes through so there's that might as well go ahead and put the float bowl on. Now you want to be sure to put the float bowl on so the drain is pointing out. So this carburetor mounts on here this way. This is the front, that's the back because I know. So the drain is going to fit towards this side. You want to clean this bolt off too. You want to clean off everything. So now that gets screwed in there. Right. On this carburetor, it's a 10, 10 millimeter. All right, it's 10 millimeter. So now we have to put this funky jet in the top. Uh, do I have any WD-40? Let me get a little WD-40 and spray on this. Okay, I sprayed a little WD-40 on it, and now see, it's got two flat spots. The flat spots got to line up there, so you got to push this in, line the flat spots up, and then push this in. See, with the WD-40, it went right in with my thumb, no problem. So now we put the idle stop screw in, and we can use the same screwdriver that we used for the uh, the jet. And we're going to screw that in all the way till it stops and we're going to come out four turns because that's where it was so there's half one one and a half two two and a half three three and a half four that's where that was so now the carburetor's all packed together now we're going to start putting it back in we made a new gasket i'm going to make an i'm going to make a separate video on how to make the gaskets but we went ahead and made a gasket for it and we slid it back up on the machine angle here where you can see Oops. 
fell over. No. There we go. All right. So we're going to start by putting the carburetor on the two studs. Once we get them on the two studs, we're going to hook up this linkage. All right, that linkage is in. And like I said, as you can see, once you put the linkage in and when you start pushing it, see how the linkage is turning? So once it's there, it's right. But we'll leave it back a little bit. I need a flashlight. We are going to have to hook the spring on um, into a second hole. I can't do it with, I can't do it with one hand. As you can see, it's in the second hole where it belongs. All right. So now we just go ahead and push the carburetor on the rest of the way. Still good, right? Yep. So now the next piece that goes on is the back part of the air cleaner. to the two nuts. Oh, that's not good. I didn't realize this, but the, the choke rod has fallen off. So let's see. That's full choke. The choke rod fell off, so we have re put the choke rod back on. I do believe the reason why the choke rod fell off is because the air cleaner is what keeps it. Yes, the air cleaner has this little catch here to keep it from falling off. So I'm glad I caught that. I didn't realize that at first. So now that goes there. Here are the two. Then the two carburetor nuts go on. And you always want to start all the screws before you tighten anything so you can wiggle stuff around. All right, so now I got that bottom, bottom bolt in. So now we need to... Tighten the back part of the air cleaner. All right. Back part of the air cleaner is on. So now we need to pull the crankcase vent line. And it just sticks in the hole. There we go. The gas tank vent line. Sticks in the hole. All right. Now we have this back piece that holds the air filter. It has four screws, which are eight millimeter or Phillips.
need to reconnect the fuel line. We'll go ahead and turn the fuel on, which is straight down. Make sure that this doesn't pour gas out. Make sure that it floats working properly. Now we just need the other parts of the air cleaner. Let me put the, the air cleaner, it, it's got just, has a foam piece that fits into another cover and then these two clips hold it on. Up one top, one at the bottom. And then let me get it down on the floor and uh, we'll start it up. All right, here we go. We're gonna switch the machine on. We're gonna choke it. And... Yeah, go ahead and pull it over. There we go. Up and running. According to the voltmeter, we've got 100 and 110, 120 volts. All right, everybody. That's how you clean up a carburetor in a champion generator. Uh, 4,000 starting 3,500 3, watts. We're gonna get a lamp or something to plug in and make sure it's output, but according to the voltmeter, it is working, but we don't have anything to plug into it. We'll find something to plug in and make sure it's working properly, but it sounds like it's running good. All right, everybody, thanks a lot for watching. Please subscribe, you can always do that in that corner. Please give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. working.